Hello, everyone. We're uh, going to wait for some folks to join in, and we'll get started on today's episode of Q&A with Big J. Hope everyone's enjoying the nice weather. Finally feels like spring. Just realized the event listing has the wrong date on it. got a few viewers in there give us a couple more minutes gets folks to see the live feed going and uh, obviously we're going to record and I'll share this later with everybody who can't be live at noon ish on a Friday uh, today we're going to talk about some stuff coming up in the 2022 season just give some updates on a couple of things and uh, focus primarily on the new swim testing program um, which we're very excited about but uh, want to give everybody some updates on exactly what it means on um, how to get your kids tested why you'd want to get them tested for swimming um, why it's optional all this great stuff uh, we actually just got our new date too for next week we're going to get these on a weekly basis I'm actually adding it to the blog right now Alrighty. All right, so um, let's get started for today. Welcome in everybody. Q and A with Big J. Friday, April eighth, twenty twenty two. We are less than. Oh my goodness, we're less than three months till camp starts. So we are, we are in it. This is the thick of it. This is the the last, the last few months of our ten for two. And uh, we're very excited over here. The office is buzzing. Got a lot of stuff going on. We are working on. Some great things. Um, as you know, in the past few weeks, the camp calendars were published. We just did a small update on those. If you haven't seen it, go over to campsrs.org forward slash calendars. Uh, and you can check those out, download them, print them. Uh, we have a bunch of open houses coming up this month. Each month, you know, through the start of the camp season, we're also adding a parent and camper orientation preseason in June. So we'll have those dates out relatively soon where you can come and visit uh, before camp starts and as as you may have heard we're, we're pretty much gearing up for what should feel like a normal summer and uh, we're really excited about it so um, what's great is we're going to be back to you know a lot of the wonderful traditions we have we're going to be having our full trip schedule a great event schedule theme days uh, we've added a lot of really awesome additions to our daily activities you're going to see a lot more happening on and off campus this summer so it's anything but ordinary, but uh, the, the feel of it without masks, without worrying so much about this pandemic and, you know, based on where we are today, hoping to, to stay uh, feeling this great. And of course, if anything changes, we'll update everyone as we can. Um, you know, we basically send everything out for updates, email, on the blog, the website, uh, social media, and then also through the Q&A with Big J just to get some questions up here. As you have questions, folks, just leave them up in the comments for me um, and I'll get to everybody. We're going to have a quick session today. It should be uh, only about 20, 25 minutes or so. I want to dive into the swim program um, and what it means for everybody with the optional swim testing. It's a, it's a brand new offering we have this year. Uh, so let's start kind of before the swim testing thing. Let's talk about Camps R Us's swim program. So Camps R Us offers recreational swim. What that means is all of our campers come to camp and we have to assume that they are non-swimmers. That means we assume every camper cannot swim. And the reason we do this, there's two reasons. One, we don't offer on-site testing generally. Um, we have tried it in the past. It's very, very cumbersome and time-consuming. And having our own testing on-site it really precludes the kids from enjoying that first day at swim uh, because they're all getting tested. Um, and also the second reason for it is for safety, of course. When you're a non-swimmer at camp, you are uh, in water less than chest deep. So if you're watching on screen here, you know, middle of your chest 
is where the water can go up to. And that's a requirement by the Department of Health. And for those of you who don't know, Camp Sur Us is permitted to operate by the Nassau County and Suffolk County Departments of Health. Uh, and they have their rules and regulations administered by the State Department of Health, um, who I'm sure you're all familiar with through COVID. You heard about all the things that they've been doing. And, you know, we have to follow their guidelines and that guidance. Um, and there's a lot of operating procedures that go into it. And aquatics and swimming is a really important one, considering that, you know, if you don't do it in a safe, responsible way, it can be dangerous. We all know, you know, water safety is paramount. Um, so, so we have a recreational non-swimmer program. What, that, what happens is when you get to a certain age at camp, being a non-swimmer is usually fine when you're a kinder camper, first grader, maybe even a second grader, because you're in water that you'd normally be in um, under, under normal circumstances when you're not at camp. So, you know, water that's less than chest deep, you're still learning to swim, you're probably not a strong swimmer, um, and, and you're comfortable. Or you're in the spray park area, most of our pools have an interactive spray park, uh, and, and you're having a great time and you're enjoying that time. But once you hit that age, like second grade, third grade, fourth grade, what happens is if you become a stronger swimmer, but your body hasn't grown tall enough to get into the deeper water, you find yourself in a weird spot. And oftentimes you'll feel a little out of place still being in the small pool, the instructional pool, the kiddie pool, or not being able to go into the deeper water main pool. And so years ago, we added a feature where we were doing swim testing on site. And we took on this responsibility and, you know, allowed campers to get tested optionally. Um, and it worked, you know, kids who were basically in second, third grade and up could get swim tested to get into deeper water. Now for us, a deep water swimmer is less than chin deep. So from chest deep to chin deep, you're looking on most people about eight inches more of water, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it really can be a lot for a kid. Um, and to allow you to get into that deeper water to get on the water slides at some of the pools where we have that. And so that just adds to the excitement and, and helps you to be a deep water swimmer. Um, what's happened over the past couple of years during the pandemic is that there's been a significant shortage of lifeguards and folks becoming certified as lifeguards because a lot of people weren't going to pools or hiring lifeguards in general. And, and so there wasn't really a need for them. So finding lifeguards who are also certified to provide um, swim instruction, and those are the same people who provide testing, is very difficult. Um, and to try and find those folks to cover 11 campuses and all the kids that we have with all the pools in the summertime would have presented a major obstacle for us to get kids tested appropriately and in time to get in the water that they want to be in. Um, it's also something that the pool facilities that we use need us to coordinate and schedule um, and their ability to do that being short staffed because a lot of employees of pools also work in other departments uh, within their parks or help out with other aspects of running the park and they're not available till just before the summer starts when the pool opens it's become an issue for us so we we sat and had a meeting and we brainstormed this for a while before we released this information and we said could we do Preseason swim testing, meaning we get the kids who want to be tested to be in deeper water tested now or through the preseason, April, May, June, and they could go and get tested and, you know, they could be considered swimmers at camp just by going to have this test. And it's a quick, you know, couple of minute test. Um, and I'll take you guys through it all, too. Um, the, the thing is, it's optional. So kids always have that non-swimmer option. And we, we, we say with the swimmer option, we're starting that at, at first grade. Um, kindergarten age kids are still gonna be in the instructional pool for their size and ability. Um, but starting at first grade, if you can get into the deeper water and you do have some swimming experience, you can get tested to be considered a swimmer. This test is something that is arbitrarily determined. It's very objective based on what the Department of Health requires for swimmers to know. Um, it's the same type of test that was offered when we did it in season at the pools. Um, it's just being done preseason. So the test is pretty simple. I'll take you guys through it. Um, basically, if you're interested and want to see if your child if, or if you might understand what their swimming ability is before you go and spend the time and uh, pay the fee to get tested, um, this is what you need to know in order to be classified as a swimmer. So campers have to be able to do each of the following. You have to be able to go in the water, go completely under. 
You have to get back up to the surface. They call it recovering to the surface and stay there for at least a minute floating or treading water. So you got to be able to float or tread water on the surface for a minute. Then you have to be able to turn around in the water and face where they're going to exit. So they're going to have you completely turn around and still stay floating. Swim 25 yards, uh, which is a decent distance. Um, and you can do that with a front stroke or a back stroke. Um, they really don't care what type of maneuver you use as long as you're swimming and not stopping for 25 yards without stopping. And then you have to be able to get yourself out of the water. That's the test. It's about two minutes long. Um, but if you fail any part of that, you're not considered a swimmer under those circumstances. Um, so that's important to know. If you think your child can do that and you want them to be considered a swimmer for the summer, you have the option to go to our swim testing facility. And we've partnered with the folks at Freeport Recreation Center. Um, and they're fantastic. Uh, I know a couple of folks had a couple of hiccups last night with the first test uh, with getting some times right. But we're working on making sure that we have someone there. And last night we had one of our directors there just to help coordinate. I believe we had 15 kids get tested last night. So a great start. Uh, I know it was only two days notice and we're aware of that too. If anybody's watching or listening, um, when I first posted the swim information, it was on Tuesday and the first test was last night, Thursday. And I totally understand it's two days notice and um, I get it. Our swim tester gets his schedule a week in advance for this allowable swim testing. Um, so the next date I actually have, and I'll post it and share it right after the Q&A today. Uh, it's going to be next Thursday, April 14th from 6.30 to 7.15 p.m. All right, the next swim test available at Freeport Rec, Thursday, April 14th, 6.30 to 7.15 p.m. You can come at any time within that window. You follow the instructions that are on uh, the page on our website. Basically, you park, you go inside, you go to the cashier. It's $8. That's a fee payable directly to Freeport Rec. Um, Camp Soros is not charging for this, but they are charging for the services of the swim tester. Um, you go right through the locker room if you need to change and head to the pool. And if you have a child uh, who's young and a little uh, uncomfortable, you can let them go through uh, with a parent. Um, and then you're looking for our swim tester. His name is Tom, and he's going to be the one administering the test. It's pretty simple from there. So it's either a pass or fail. You'll get a green light if you pass or red light if you fail. Um, you can go back and get retested. So if you have kids who are doing a learn to swim program now or they're taking swim lessons and they fail now, but it was close, you can always come back and try again. Uh, they do make you pay the fee again, I believe. Um, but what we're going to do with the swim testing is basically be able to determine which campers are able to be in water less than chin deep for the summer. And everyone else who's either not swim tested or doesn't pass will be in less than chest deep water. Same as we've always done. Uh, but we're just offering this preseason. A uh, couple of questions that have come up uh, before Q&A today that I want to share. People send them over to us in advance. Someone was asking, are we going to have any times or dates during school breaks? And the answer is we hope so. Uh, so during upcoming break for Easter, uh, we're trying to get swim testing available uh, both daytime and evening hours. Right now we're sticking to Thursday evenings, but we are going to try and get something during the break. Um, I don't believe we're going to have uh, the ability to do this on weekends. The Freeport Rec Center is just too jam-packed with their schedule to allow a group like ours to get in on weekends. But if we can make that happen, we will. We are also reaching out to other places to see if any other facilities are available for swim testing, especially for our campuses out east. Um, we know Freeport can be a little bit of a hike. Um, we are aware of that. The issue is twofold. One, finding a facility that's available that has someone who's certified to test kids for swimming ability, and also uh, that is acceptable by Department of Health. Remember, as I said earlier, we're permitted to operate by Department of Health. They determine that we can open or not. We have to meet their guidelines. And one of those for swim testing is to have a provider that they approve. Um, so, so we are met with some challenges. We are working towards a goal of having more testing available, more dates and times, and getting as many kids swim tested as possible so that you can um, enjoy the pool facility to your swimming ability. Um, and so and so that's the goal here. Of course, I welcome any questions to, that come in, whether it's during the live uh, portion today or afterwards. You can always email us. You can call our, our main office, and I'll put up our contact info uh, in the comments section. Let me do that here. So 
So our main number, 877-850-2267. That's the toll free. Um, the local one is the 935-2267. And then everyone knows the info at campsarus.org. And then on all socials, it's at Camps or Us. You're on Facebook with us if you're on live now. So you see that with the link there. So we have Messenger there. Also, if you use the chat feature on the website, um, that goes straight to Messenger. And there's a number of directors who are standing by throughout the day uh, to answer questions through the chat feature on the website. Um, so, so that's kind of wrapping up what the swim program and the preseason testing is all about. It's, it's important to know that our goal here is to allow kids who want the option of being in deeper water to have that option. Um, again, it is completely optional if you don't have any interest in your child being in deeper water. And again, just to review for everybody on uh, as we got more viewers coming in, normally a non-swimmer at camp is less than chest deep. So that's right here. I'll back up a little bit so you can see, right? It's, it's right there. So like where you would hold your hand for the Pledge of Allegiance, that's the line. And then if you're considered a deep water swimmer for camps or us purposes, that's less than chin deep. So right here. Um, and that's when you're standing flat footed in the water. And so when we um, see in the summertime when our, our aquatics team is there and our pool activity leaders are there, they monitor for this stuff and they make sure that the kids are tall enough to be in the water they're in. And we have ways to identify campers as swimmers and non-swimmers. We use our buddy board system. It's a very intricate process, but it's necessary to make sure that the kids are safe, uh, that we feel comfortable with what they're doing in and out of the water. We have multiple areas of the pool facility that we use simultaneously. Uh, so we have a lot of staff. Uh, we have our wristbands, we have our buddy system, and we also want to make sure the parents at home, especially when we're off campus on trips, swimming, and things like that, we want you to have that peace of mind. We don't want you to worry. Um, we are taking care of the kids always as if they're our own, and and that's the case in a lot of cases. A lot of our, our staff have kids at camp, including me, so um, we really want to make sure that everything we do is, is safety first. Um, so that the kids can feel free to enjoy and have a blast while they're at the pool. Um, while we're talking about water activities, also want to mention, um, if you haven't seen some of the posts we put up, we have a lot of great water activities happening on campus as well. So we're adding a, a lot of features to our splash zone, including having a full-time staff member to, to supervise those activities, uh, which is a new feature for us. We used to have our group leaders and counselors run it as they arrived, but having someone there to curate the activities and really facilitate things is going to be a really great benefit at all of our campuses this summer. We, of course, have added in over the past couple of years a lot of stuff on campus, our inflatable slip and slides. We're adding in twice a summer. We're having a foam party. Um, we're doing a lot more uh, bucket and relay type activities. Uh, we're also having our new inflatable water slides travel around to our campuses. So you're going to see those two or three times for the entire week at a campus. So you have water slide week on the calendar. And uh, we have the images of those slides up on the calendar. I don't know if it's going to be exactly those in those particular weeks, but you'll get to see those throughout the summer. They're fantastic. Um, so we're really looking forward to that, too. In addition to the swimming program, we have great on-campus water activities. A lot more coming up this summer. Um, a lot more we're going to introduce. We're going to start doing Q&A weekly again as we hit the spring um, and start getting into that warm weather. So you'll see me uh, up here every Friday at noon. Uh, we'll do it on Facebook Live, and then we record it and send it out on uh, YouTube. And we'll also email it and uh, put it up on Campanion for everyone there, too. Actually, while I'm talking about it for Campanion, uh, that's our app, and I will uh, put up the link to download the Campanion app here. Let me just grab it there. It's important to know two things. We're going to be sending out a reminder um, about Campanion very soon. If you've been with us before, you have to retake your child's um, demo photo. Um, on Campanion, we have something called PhotoStream, and all of our staff have photos that they upload daily in different uh, albums, but you have a photo stream that's specifically trained to recognize your child's face. And so Campanion's really cool in that way that when a photo of them pops up, it'll go straight to the top of your stream so you'll see your kids first, which of course is what parents want to see. You don't want to dive through all the photos, although you can go through all the albums too. And the face finder feature is really strong. It really picks up the face, but it needs a new training photo every season. As the kids grow, their face changes a little bit. Um, so. Camp Campanion, uh, our, our app distributor from Campminder, 
they reset all the face finder photos every uh, April. So March 30th was the last day. And so as of April 1st, uh, if you've had a photo in there from last season, it's not there anymore. You need to add a new training photo. So we're going to send a reminder out. But if you're on the app, you can always add a photo. You can just take the photo right from the app um, or upload a recent one. And it'll train the system to find your child's photos this summer. All of the albums from last year will be up there too. You're going to see a lot of photos shared out there too. Um, this year, we're really excited to continue using the app. Um, you'll also see things on there like posts uh, where you can click links and find additional information about things coming up at camp. And so if you want to keep up to date with Camps or Us and everything that's going on, the Campanion app is a great way to keep it right there in your pocket. It has push notifications to your cell phone's home screen. Um, so definitely check that out, download it if you don't have it. It's a free app uh, and it's available all year. Uh, we're just going to reset those photos now. So wrapping up for today, uh, I think we've, we've got some great information out about the swim testing program. After this Q&A, you're going to see a post come out with the new date. Again, it's next Thursday, April 14th at 6.30. And you can come anytime between 6.30 and 7.15. So anytime within that window, you're going to follow the instructions um, on the post page. And I'll put the link to the post page here too. Let's do that. Hang on one sec. So everyone has access to that one here. All right, there we go. And so as you've noticed, since we've launched the new website, we put up all the big news first up on the blog. Then I share it out on socials. It comes out usually on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and I'll share it out to the parent association and, uh, and also any other groups that we have up on socials. Meredith has a question. Will they always be at 630? Right now they are always at 630. Um, so, so it's based on our testers' ability to, to find that time in the schedule and the pool's availability to have space available for us. We are trying to have alternative times and days available. Hopefully, as we get closer to the summer, uh, we'll see more availability open up. We're going to try and run this weekly through the start of the camp season. Um, and also keep in mind um, with 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 uh, Freeport Rec, as it gets warmer, hopefully in general, they'll have some more stuff open up as people head outside more. Being in an enclosed facility, they're very popular when the weather's cold. So we're working on it. Um, it's really the first time we're trying this, and it's bound to their availability and what they can give us. So we'll be updating every week. So that those dates and times will be on the website I just shared, the page, the preseason swim testing page. We'll also reshare that out on socials, on Campanion, and by email for all currently enrolled campers. If you've already gotten swim tested, um, thank you for coming yesterday, and we appreciate it. Your information is already gonna be saved with our tester, and we'll get it updated in our systems. Um, but of course, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us earlier in the comments. I gave you the phone numbers, the email. Um, and like I said, the chat feature on the website has been a great one since we launched. Alrighty, I think we're going to call it for today. Thanks everyone for joining me on Q&A with Big J. We'll be back next week uh, with another episode. Um, and we'll see you then. Thanks so much.